growing up in the area, you, we'd heard stories about bodies in a well and stuff. Didn't really have names associated with it and that sort of stuff. Um, but you know, I it was. I just thought it was worth looking into. Unbelievable story tonight. Unbelievable story. Bodies in a well, like dozens and dozens and dozens of bodies. Potential victims of a serial killer. Let me show you his picture. You never heard of him before, but here he is. Donald Dean Studi, alleged serial killer. Who's making the allegations? His daughter. Now, Donald's not alive anymore. He died back in 2013 at age 75. Um, you got to hear this story. Isabella Bosco from our affiliate Cam TV has more for us tonight. Deputy Michael Wake has lived in Tabor, Iowa his whole life and had several dealings with Donald Studi, admitting something seemed off. We had one time he held himself hostage with a gun. Um, was, was threatening to do self-harm. We talked him out of that. About a year ago, Studi's daughter Lucy contacted the deputy, claiming her father would bring women home and kill them, burying them in a well that's 90 feet deep. Growing up in the area, you, we'd heard stories about bodies in a well and stuff. Didn't really have names associated with it and that sort of stuff. Um, but, you know, I, it was... I just thought it was worth looking into. This area, Green Hollow Road, is where Donald lived, and the well is up in the hills. We found the well, and we have uh, uh, people that she has said might know something. We've contacted them and got their statements. We here in the last week or so, we did take a couple of uh, cadaver dogs up there. They looked at this, you know, they went over the scene. And yes, they, they indicated. That's still not enough evidence that there are bodies there. The sheriff says agencies like the FBI and the Iowa Department of Criminal Investigations are providing support. To see if the bodies are there, Sheriff Astrop says this is a possibility. So if we core drilled some four inch holes around there and if there was that many bodies, we would probably come up with a bone, I would think. Astro is getting estimates on how much that would cost. But first, he'll bring back cadaver dogs, bring in metal detectors, and perhaps use ground-penetrating radar to see what's there. He warns the investigation will be slow, but he's making this promise. We're, we're going to follow through. You know, we're going to finish this one way or another. We're going to get the answers to this. Is it possible that this guy's one of the most notorious serial killers that we never heard of before? Let me bring in our guest joining us tonight in New York City, editor at large for Newsweek, Navi Jamali is with us, uh, and he was there for all of this. And joining us in Los Angeles, California, retired FBI Special Agent Bobby Chacon. Um, Navi, um, this story unreal. Um, did you have an opportunity, and obviously you did, to speak with um, Donald Studi's daughter? What was the impression that she made on you when she's telling you this unbelievable story? Well, this is a woman who has been telling the story consistently for 45 years. Um, you know, uh, look, before I was a, a, a journalist, I spent a lot of time working undercover um, as an intelligence officer. I know how to do debriefing. And there's little tells that people make when they're telling a lie. You, know, you look down to your left. The consistency, the fact that she was able to point by uh, locations, I was there when the dogs hit on those sites. She did not direct the dogs. The dogs gravitated toward those sites organically. There was two dogs. They were brought at separate times. I mean, just this is a very consistent story. Um, her motive is not money or fame. Uh, you know, and again, as a reporter, we've talked to other people um, that have corroborated bits and pieces of this. And look, I take the standard approach. If you're going to lie about the little things, you can't trust someone about the big things. And so far, we've been able to, you know, corroborate quite a few little things. And I, I think the big things stand up to them, to uh, what she's saying. It's unbelievable. So um, let me ask you, Bobby, um, the FBI, I don't think, uh, what, Naveed, has the FBI stepped in to do any searching yet? I, I, I'll be honest. I think the FBI has kind of fudged this. And I'll say it this way, that there's one, and Bobby will, you know, is very well versed in this. There's a line agent who's, you know, junior agent who's been assigned to this case. And uh, frankly, he came out earlier this year and they, they didn't excavate. They tried to validate that the well existed. And in doing so, they brought a backhoe uh, when they should have been brought bringing forensic anthropologists and 
you know, that pile that they put out, the dogs hit on it. So I'm not so sure what the FBI is doing. Um, I, I can tell you the sheriff has been very clear that they have yet to provide any support. They came on the land and dug without checking with him or informing him. So I, I'm a little hesitant to say that the FBI is involved or that they're even providing assistance at this point. And if they are, we, it has yet to materialize. All right, Bobby, give us the inside scoop on how the FBI approaches a situation like this. And the allegations are it's like 50 to 70 potential victims buried in this area. Um, your thoughts tonight, Bobby? Well, uh, first, let's be clear. Uh, serial killing is a federal offense, right? There is a federal statute that addresses serial killing. It falls under the jurisdiction of the FBI. If this is a, a bona fide serial killer case, it would fall under uh, 28 U.S. Code uh, 540, would be the federal statute that covers serial killing. Um, and the FBI is involved. I understand the FBI is coming to a meeting next week in the county. No rush. Uh, the perpetrator, the alleged perpetrator is dead. The victims are, there's no more victims to be had. Um, they'll take a slow and methodical approach. I can't talk, speak to what ha what's happened previously, um, but the, this, this would be a case where the FBI would step in. Certainly you have a finite search area. Um, it would be fairly simple to check out these allegations. Um, it's not hard to do these kinds of excavations. I, I think that he's right. You would, you would bring in uh, forensic anthropologists, which we do all the time. We have them on staff at Quantico. Um, we have them on contract all over the country. Um, it's not uncommon for us to use people like that. Um, and, and so I, I think you have a finite area to search. It's not one of these you know, open-ended searches. I think that they'll go in if they find uh, justification. They'll go in, they'll do a, a careful search, and, and they'll see what they find. Ground penetrating radar probably would not be effective here. We stopped using that a while back, um, but there are other search methods that uh, probably could be employed to check out whether or not this is a, a valid concern. And, and Naveed, she's saying about 50 to 70 victims, and she was there in, in some capacity when her father would tell her to do things? Yeah, I mean, so this is this is part of it, is that she would, in some cases, help dispose of the bodies. Not kill people, but she described several instances in which she witnessed her father and other people uh, bringing bodies and disposing them. The well is just one site. And, and just one point of clarification, while the former property is five acres, um, you know, if this guy was a serial killer, he's not going to abound by property lines. The, the actual property is significantly larger. Bobby's right, ground penetrating radar, it's a well, it's not going to be useful. Um, it's a pretty significant uh, body of land. And, and the images you showed in the intro, it doesn't exactly explain what this is. This is essentially a crater that you have to walk down to. Um, it's completely shielded from the outside world. No one can hear you going in there. There's no foot traffic that goes through. It's a perfect place, as one investigator told me, frankly, to bury a body. She was telling people for 45 years. Who, who was she telling, Naveed? I mean, you know, she tells us, and we've, we've got some, you know, look, listen, we're talking about the 70s and the 80s. If there are records, they're sparse, it's hard to get a hold of, it's not centralized, it's not digitized. So just getting records has been a chore. Uh, we've been able to validate that she did, indeed, and you, you heard the deputy in the outset um, say that, you know, he, he's heard her, he, she came there quite a few years ago, and the sheriff's department does have, has been able to validate that. She told everyone from, it's a sad case, everyone from her um, teachers, her principal, to, to priests, to um, counselors to various law enforcement agencies and you know it's just for a number of reasons um, while Don's duty was alive they just never went in there to check which they could have done and you know easily validated or um, proven this to not be the case and they just didn't do it. Bobby your reaction to that that she was telling people all along um, and, and why wouldn't yeah, someone kind of like a, take a closer look at all that? It baffles me that, that no one's looked into it till now. And I, I believe, and if you can confirm, I think she's even willing to take a lie detector test. And, and so she I is. think that, uh, you know, it's, it seems on the surface to be credible. This seems to be a credible claim. And I think that that's why, you know, they'll have meetings, they'll, they'll you know, and, and they'll look at the property. I mean, the one thing that I think disturbs me in reading the Newsweek piece is that she claims when they brought her out there that it looks significantly different than it did to her in the 70s, that there may be some logging and some bulldozing. So some of that ground may have been unearthed. But the thing is, if there were that many bodies there, somebody should have found something. You know, you, we've heard these cases where hunters or somebody walking their dog finds things. And if there was a, a mass grave, um, I think if there was some significant excavation by others that something would have been found. But again, 
even though it's a large area, it's not like, you know, we're, we're not wandering. We're not like wandering in the dark. We have the area, we know where it is. We can do kind of sample searches in different areas. I think that because we know where the area is, we're not just stumbling around in the dark to look. So we have kind of a finite, even though it's large, a finite area that they can do sample searches and maybe come up with something. All right.